Jaden Daniels at LSU, nearly 4,000 passing yards, 1,100 rushing yards, just a cool 50 touchdowns. Colt McCoy, when you see a quarterback prospect with those types of numbers, you know, in the air and on the ground, what are you looking for in his tape? Obviously, Jaden Daniels is extremely athletic, freaky athletic. And the things that he can do with the ball in his hands, like, no, here's, he won the Heisman Trophy. Those for a ton of yards, those for a ton of touchdowns, rushes. Like, he is the best athlete on the field in all the games that we've watched. There's also a little bit of room for improvement, but overall, this guy is extremely talented. We're watching the Ole Miss game here. Early in the game, you, you first watch this play and you realize, holy smokes, like, he is by far the best athlete uh, on the grass, right? We're going to have a little sale concept, which is a very common concept in the NFL, obviously very similar in college, where you're going to get a post by the outside receiver. You're going to get a sale route. And then you're going to get a kind of a, a delayed flat route right here. It's a Mardi Gras read, top down, post, sale, flat. And then on the backside here, if everybody in the coverage rolls over and covers the flood route, the three level throw to the to the weak side, this is the this is where the ball goes, right? Great design. Teams run it all the time. It's a very good concept for a lot of good for a lot of coverages. Let's let's diagnose this play from the beginning. Really nice pocket, good drop, good feet, good eyes by Jaden. He's seeing the field. You know, when you pause it right here, everyone's covered right? Yep. Flat player has the flat corner takes away the cell deep safety takes away the post. Like there's really nowhere to throw. Okay. The best answer is this wrist route right here, the middle of the field. There's nobody here, right? That's essentially where the ball can go. Now this move from Jaden Daniels, like splitting two defenders, he takes this covered concept on the front side and turns it into you know, basically an eight or nine yard gain. I mean, watch it from the from the back here. I mean, not many guys can do this, right? Extremely, extremely impressive. Like if that's me, I mean, <laughs> that's probably like a three or four yard gain. Like I, I can't, <laughs> I can't do that. Not many guys can. I mean, he almost splits these two defenders. Just barely gets tripped up, right? But let's talk about let's talk about like. You know, as we as it translates, as we go into the NFL, right? This would be what I consider a clean pocket. You know, nobody's there. I think you know, going to the NFL, taking that next step, like this is where that ball needs to be thrown, right? Just take a breath. It's covered. Let me reset and throw this basic, right? Right in that window. Okay. Yeah. But. It's not a negative play. If I'm his coach and we're grading this tape, we're like, hey, man, like the concept is covered. I, I, I made a bad call, right? It's not there. You could have hit this basic. I want to show you where this second window basic is, like in the, in the pocket. You got a good clean pocket. But at the same time, dude, not taking a negative play, getting me eight yards, second right. and two on the call sheet. I'll take that all day, bud. Great job. Yeah. Check plus. Right. Yeah. It, but it's a good eight yard gain that could have been like a great 25 yard gain. Exactly. Exactly. And I would say, as we, we're talking about, you know, him translating into the NFL, I think he's going to be a great player. Like, use those legs and taking that hit and all those things on plays where we have to, right? There, this guy's open. You got a good pocket. Let's just, let's just second level throw this ball on this basic. He probably makes 20 yards. And now we're real. Now we're really rolling, right? So not a bad play, extremely athletic play, but translating to the NFL, right? Like there's room to to just hold in the pocket, make that throw. Did you see other parts in this game where he hit that basic, where he hit that inbreaker? Yeah, let's go a few plays later. Really good throw here. You know they get down early in this game. They're down 14. Obviously the coach recognizes whoever's calling these plays. Like hey. We need to attack the middle of the field, right? We're running a lot of concepts, three level throws, you know, working the outside, like the middle of the field is where, you know, we want to attack. Next drive. Here we go. Okay, they get in a two by two formation, motion them down. He knows it's not man coverage. 
hey, we're wanting to work the middle of the field. And this is a really nice job by Jaden. Good feet, three and one hitch. And throws that soft spot in the middle of the field, right? Neighbors is a stud, but watch Jaden's eyes. This is a two deep coverage, right? This is the guy you have to affect. When you break down cover two, generally when teams are playing cover two, the Mike linebackers, the run through player, the carry player, he's going to turn to the field or to speed, right? LSU sets his formation into the boundary. So this linebacker has to turn to speed like that. There's more grass over here than there is over here. Okay. But Jaden does a nice job with his eyes. You can tell he's, he knows I want to work the middle of the field. He holds this guy because he's the only one that can take this part of the field away. He just very subtle moves the mic just a hair, opens him up to the field to speed and really opens up that window and throws a strike. So today we're going to look at one individual game. As you can see, it's against Ole Miss top 10 ranked team at the time. These two programs played, uh, we're going to go through multiple traits and like multiple packages of what Jaden Daniels brings to the table. We'll see how he throws against pressure. We'll see the loft and trajectory. He dishes balls out with on downfield passes and definitely where we should start Colt is his mobility. We'll leave and table the runner stuff for a little bit later. Let's first look at mobility as a passer, because to me, this is like the pocket passer plus traits that where the new wave of great quarterbacks are, where they use that athleticism to become great throwers and not just great runners. Yeah, exactly right. And obviously, again, we've said it. He's the best athlete on the field. There's no doubt about it. We're in a little bit of a two-minute drill, two-minute situation here. We need like a big chunk play, right? LSU calls a version of of like a like an all go, right? He's running a post, or really really more of a go ball here. You know, you're getting a double post action here with a high cross from this guy. Okay, so ideally, I think he's trying to hit the high cross, right? Carry him all out. You know, get like a level two kind of like. We call it a two ball over the first wave of hook players kind of onto that second level. And it kind of all gets covered, right? So Jane's looking, 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 kind of gets heat from the, from the, from the left side here, escapes, sets his feet, finds that first inside post. Who's really, who's really not in the read. He's really like a clear out runner, flips his hips and, and throws a strike. I mean, it ends up being a drop, really good throw. Right, could have been an explosive play, probably gets you in field goal range, but that's just an impressive throw. This this is the stuff that pops on tape when you're watching Jaden Daniels, right? I think the receiver can come down with this, but just the fact that he rolls to his left, flips his hips, gets his feet set, and throws an accurate throw down the field is a quality that he shows over and over and over throughout the season. This is the very next play, right? Still in the two-minute drive, still in a two-minute situation. Need a chunk play, need some yards. Okay, Ole Miss decides to heat him up, which that's going to happen, right? You're, you're, you need a chunk play, like let's put some heat on him. Jaden has nice mobility, escapes out of the pocket. He rolls right, like kind of in trouble. Has a guy on the sidelines, you know, right here. Maybe a chance to throw there, get a, get a catch, get out of bounds, play third down. But again, when you're talking about the best athlete on the field, this is the things that in the that he brings to the table, right? Got to cover everybody. Sucks up the defense, finds his check down, and now you get a first down, right? Really good athletic play, smart play. I think when he gets into the NFL, the plaster situations that the NFL defenses come at you with, like, a lot of these things are, are, are going to be like studied and Hey, look, if he gets out of the pocket, right. We got a plaster, 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 cover everybody, cover down, right. Chase D tackles, D linemen, defensive ends, rushers. Don't let him get out of the pocket. But if he does, the, you know, his best quality is extending the play. Don't let that happen. Right. But he's extremely athletic. He's fast. He's mobile, you know, and on a broken play like that, you know, they end up making 13 yards, which hard to stop. Colt, like we talked about, 1,100 yards rushing. 
this season. In fact, that is way more than he had at any other point in his career. 885 during his first senior year at LSU, let's put it that way. 710 his last season at Arizona State. No matter what game you put on, you're going to see some type of explosive run. And Colt, some of it is designed and some of it's not. Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, if you're if you're a play caller and you have Jaden Daniels back there, like calling a QB draw when teams are playing coverage is probably right. the safest play on the call <laughs> sheet, right? And I do think that will translate into the NFL. It's more of how often can I call this? Like, when should I call this? You know, can I call zone read three or four times a game? Can I call a QB draw two to three times a game? You know, then it's all of a sudden, okay, now that's seven to eight carries a game from my quarterback. Like, generally, that's about as much as you're going to see, right? Watch this. Second down and 17. LSU calls QB draw. It's a six-man box. And this is the stuff that's uncoachable, right? Like, escapes through the pocket, runs around a safety, and doesn't take any hits, gets out of bounds, and... It's an explosive 40 to 50 yard run down the field. Like that's just a nightmare for defensive coaches, for defensive coordinators. It's like, I don't really want to heat him up. We saw what happens when you rush him. He runs around the rushers, right. you know, sets up the defense, finds a, finds a guy open. Now it's called QB draw, right? And he outruns your corner. Okay. Yeah. Like that's just a really impressive clip. And it's sort of yards that show up in a game that really, you know, you're playing against a lot of quarterbacks who like, I don't even have to defend the quarterback draw because that's not really an issue of mine. I can, yeah. I can like, if you do that, like, okay, maybe I'll give up 10 yards, but that's it. Right. So Colt, I wanted to ask you that because when, when you're watching quarterbacks in the NFL across the league, about two thirds of them can pick up some type of yards on a scramble, but there's only like a select few that you can actually call, design reads for, right? So like there's a pretty big difference in scrambling versus being able to have a section of your playbook for design runs. And Jaden Daniels obviously fits in the latter. Yeah, I mean, I think with Jaden Daniels playing quarterback, you obviously have that in your playbook, right? I played with Kyler Murray, who I think is elite from the standpoint of what he brings to the table as a dual threat guy, like very accurate in the pocket, but if you call, you know, a QB counter or you call a QB draw or you call a zone read, you know, maybe three to five times a game, like you feel pretty confident that Kyler's going to make somebody miss. It's a safe call. It, and I think Jaden Daniels with his speed and explosiveness sort of gives you that same flexibility, right? Here's another play. Started th third quarter here, right? He goes through his read, kind of resets backside, doesn't love it, and – all of a sudden, Jaden makes a move, you know, makes 15 yards, gets out of bounds, gets a personal foul hit as he's running out of bounds, takes a shot he probably shouldn't take. And now it's a 30 yard gain on first and 10 from the minus 50. And now you're in field goal range. Okay. Yep. But let's, again, talk about this on one of the plays earlier. Let's, let's watch this play. In my opinion, this is a check plus on the grade sheet. Hey, man, like positive play. You get the personal foul hit, we get 30 yards. Let's break this down. This is a very common concept in the NFL, especially when you're working the boundary and you get a two by two formation. What we're, what we're getting here is the tight end is going to run up and he's running out. Okay. He's number one. The receiver is going to inside call this stem release. He's going to push vertical and he's running the bench route. Okay. So it really is a high low on the corner if they're playing cover two, which it looks like they are right now. Okay, watch this route develop. Okay, I think that on three and a hitch for Jaden Daniels, watch him in the pocket, that right there, he can throw here for a five to six yard gain, not take a hit, stay ahead of the chain. Or if he shoulder pumps or ball fakes to get him to do this, then I think he can throw here, right? Yeah, we see he that a lot in the league, yeah. Massive leverage on the safety, right? Yep. Great job by the receiver. He started on the numbers. He inside releases to save himself some grass. And now there's there's space out here to throw the ball, okay? Yep. 
I think Jaden just is too fast. He gets ahead of it. Now, what he does he does is like, shoot, I think I, I blew through that read. I think I had it. Now he resets to try to hit the backside dig. Okay? But he's just a little bit ahead of it. He's a little bit too early, right? If you take a full three and a hitch, work the concept into the boundary, then reset on your second hitch to the backside dig, I think he'll have somebody there, okay? I think Jaden just rushes through it a little bit. Maybe he's confused on the defense. Maybe he's just not seeing it properly, right? And then he goes and makes a play. So, right. again, this is a check plus grade, right? We just got 30 yards. But yeah. when I'm talking about going to the NFL, like there's some things it's that the balance of it, right? He can clean up, right? Like, hey, you know, there's quick game drops. There's, you know, three and a hitch drops where we're throwing, you know, work in the middle of the field and throwing posts and and in cuts, like throws them really well. Concepts into the boundary, like there's a little bit more of a rhythm to your feet. Like a, it's a slower three and a hitch where you're really kind of working that corner to get the flat or the bench route, right? And I think that's there in this read. So sometimes he just gets a little bit ahead, speeds it up because he's such a great athlete and because he knows, hey, if all breaks down, like generally I'm going to stay ahead of the chains of my feet. And that's a yeah. check, must, check plus grade to me. I just think that there's some there's some things that he can work on that will really help his game so that when he's ready to move and ready to make plays, he can totally. do that within the timing and rhythm of the play. Colt, I thought about this a lot during last year's draft process, namely with Anthony Richardson, who I think was way undervalued and underappreciated in terms of his pocket movement. But I bring up athleticism where oftentimes with quarterbacks, it's thought of as like the potential, the ceiling. And I think that should be reversed, that athleticism and this level of mobility should almost be viewed as the floor that a player like this brings to the table. And then the understanding of when to use it or when to manipulate defenses with your eyes and with your brain, then is the ceiling on top of that. Does that make sense? Total, totally makes sense. You know, sometimes I call it um, street ball, right? I wasn't great at street ball, but there's times where if I was ahead of the play or if I, if I missed a read or, you know, I, I thought it was one coverage and it's different, like you can scramble and make a play, right? There's so many guys that are be way better at it than I am, including Jaden Daniels. It's it's obvious. He's an unbelievable athlete. But I agree exactly what you're saying, right? The How can we limit, you know, going into street ball mode by playing within the timing and rhythm of the offense and still being able to use that to our advantage, right? There There's a, there's a, there's a good way to do that. Ole Miss is showing a blitz look. Jaden doesn't love it right away. Sort of the same thing here, right? We're working the boundary or, or working the field, a high-low throw. You know, like what I would say right here is this is a tough throw. Long throw. Long throw, tough throw. I know he can do it. But if you don't like that, just check it down, right? We're already in field goal range. It's a third down situation, third and eight. Maybe check it down and the running back makes a guy miss and gets the first. If he doesn't, we're kicking a field goal, okay? But Jaden decides to take it in his own hands. He runs. He's trying to make a play. He cares. But, but dude, third and eight. Yep. right? Yep. Third and eight. And now, now we got ourselves in trouble, right? Gets lit up, fumbles the ball. Ole Miss gets the turnover. And now, you know, that three points that we had in our back pocket, maybe if we get a first on the check down, you know, we're still in, you know, scoring mode. And, you know, now now we get points taken off the board. So he very much so relies on his athletic ability, which in fairness is is great. But in the league, you want to understand like, hey, I want if I'm calling the plays for you, like I want you to take as least amount of hits as possible. Because keeping you healthy and keeping you on the field and letting you make these plays is so crucial to our offensive success. But I don't want to. I don't want to ever take these kind of shots. Right, Colt. Let's go into some of the accurate downfield throws. You know, everyone digs a long ball here. Um, three slot fade touchdowns. We'll get to those in the moment. First, let's go to the first drop back of the entire game. And look, if. I was LSU. I would have in my back pocket what I believe is going to be a maximized deep shot on the opening snap, and it's there, and he hits it. 
Yep. First drive of the game, you know, you still got a little bit of nerves. You're playing on the road. You know, I've never played at Ole Miss, but I know it's a hostile environment. You know, LSU coming into town, like, it's going to be a high-scoring affair, right? They get the matchup that they want. They shift and they motion. And now, basically, you're getting a big post over the top. You know, you're getting a crosser route. And you're getting some version of a of a flat route here. See this all the time on Sundays. All the time. Here's your read, right? A lot of times when I'm first turning on a tape to, to break down a defense, right? I'm looking at three level throws. And if you're playing a post safety look, what does he do? Does he cut the crosser or does he stay high and the zone defenders get depth to cut the crosser, right? My eyes on three level throws from like a, 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 a this formation, a one by three, like I'm looking at the post safety. If he cuts the crosser, Balls up, and I got to get it up early so that this backside corner doesn't. After the post safety cuts, he replaces. That's his job, right? The, it's got to be a quick read, a quick decision. I think LSU going in this game knows. Hey, most of the times when they're in post safety looks, they're going to cut the high cross. Like you got to get the post up, you got to get it in rhythm, and you got to put the ball in the hash so the backside corner, as he cuts and replaces, doesn't have a chance to intercept that ball. So overall, like really nice throw in rhythm, puts the ball right on the hash, right in the guy. I mean, the guy's got to make that catch. You know, he sees the post safety cut the crosser, backside corner replaces, doesn't get there in time. And what should have been an explosive play, you know, it's a drop, but really nice read, really nice throw, like consistent, good feet. Throws a little extra hitch in there just to confirm that the safety does, in fact, cut the crosser. And, you know, potentially this could have been a touchdown. You know, taking what we talked about in meetings, what we talked about in practice, the look, and and really putting it on tape and throwing a nice, nice ball. Okay, let's go into these three slot fade touchdowns. First of all, wh why do you think that these plays were there to be had? in preparation and then in execution. Cause you rarely see three slot fade touchdowns in a game, uh, much less in the first half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. You know, when you watch this tape, Ole Miss is playing a lot of man coverage. Obviously they're really concerned about neighbors, right? Number eight, I would be too. A lot of, a lot of times in this game, he's getting doubled. Well, when he gets doubled, what's the coverage on everybody else? Right. And majority of the time it's man. Okay. I think this is a really nice throw, right? Here's the guy who can take this ball away, okay? He wants to work the inside fade here, okay? But the only person that can take this away is him, and he's already, you know, two yards from the hash. So watch Jaden, watch his eyes. He knows that's the guy who can take it away, and he holds him for a tick, gets the ball up and down, and really it's an unbelievable throw and catch. Okay, remember, watch him from the back end. Jaden gets the snap, and he does a good job of just holding him for just as... In fact, he moves him a couple steps. And while he's moving with his eyes, what I really like in the pocket here is his feet. He's going to open his stance just enough, but his eyes are going to be down the field, right? Which makes the safety do this, but his feet... And hips are open to throw the slot fade to the back pylon, right? Really, really good. If that ball has any less air on it, any less touch, right? The receiver is going to run out of the back of the end zone and it's, 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 it's going to be incomplete, right? But he holds the safety just enough. He opens his hips up puts the ball on the right trajectory to where it's his guy or nobody. The guy gets one foot in and it's a big time throwing catch. Now we're going, you know, there's three of these, by the way. So obviously really, really good. As we watch this play again, right? This one, I think Josh, you could probably at least make this read, maybe not this throw, but you could at least make this read. Okay. You know, We've got three over two here, right? One of these guys getting doubled. Now this is essentially zero coverage over here, okay? 
This is where he wants to throw this ball. It's an easy read, but you still have to execute. Okay, LSU goes empty quite a bit. Really nice job by the receiver. Gets the DB's hips flipped. And nice ball by uh, Jaden Daniels, knowing, knowing the coverage pre-snap, right? Knowing I got the look. Letting the guy have enough time to win. It's another nice throw to uh, for a touchdown. All right, here we go. This is the end of a two-minute drill, like right before half, one minute left in, uh, in, the, in the second quarter. Okay, now, unique look by Ole Miss, right? It's man coverage, but they're not really, like, up and pressed, okay? So when you get at this situation, same thing. You, your drop and your hitch needs to – basically be in the same rhythm and timing of the play, right? If he's, if this guy is up here and in press coverage, right? You might get that ball up a little bit early, a little bit more arc to let the receiver find it. Um, all those things. Now that he's playing off, it becomes a little bit different drop, a little bit slower, let the play develop, then put the ball out there. So again, different look, but still man coverage, and I thought Jaden Daniels did a really nice job. Like, there's no reason to look off a of safety. The safety's over here, right? Right. Really, you're just confirming that this corner plays this receiver in man. As he gets the snap, he likes it. He likes it. Good feet. Three and a hitch. He's even. He's leaving. He's even. He's leaving. And that right there is a dime. Yep. D-O-D. Dime of the day, right? We used to do these little things uh, in the quarterback room, we had DOD in training camp, dime of day, like best throw, you know, voted on by all the quarterbacks in in the oh. quarterback room. Like, you know, no bias, like who, who throws the best ball, best catch, best play of the day each day in training camp, something to just kind of like get us through the day, you know, fun stuff, right? This would be the DOD three and a hitch. You know, when he lets this ball go, Right, look where look where this defender is, and look where that receiver is. Okay, this Jaden's throwing this to a spot. He's got good arc, good trajectory, really good feet. Three when when he takes three and a hitch and throws with confidence, like generally you're getting these these type of throws. Okay, right, throwing the guy open, and I mean this is a long handoff. Hey. Number two, just put your hands out and I'll, I'll drop it in the bucket, right? Beautiful. Really good throw. Okay, Colt. So even if you're a statue in the pocket or the most athletic quarterback in the world, you're going to have to throw in the face of pressure inside of a confined space, right? Um, there aren't tons of examples in this game, but there were three that we wanted to pull and some good and some bad. Yeah, some good, some bad here, right? You know, Ole Miss... Um, Heated them up pretty good amount, right? They didn't disguise their coverages that well, right? A lot of man coverage, a lot of easy looks. But here's one, right, where, you know, this is a big boy throw. This is a big time play, okay? You're going to motion over right here, and what you're going to get is a post-wheel combination. So, you're again, we're attack, attacking the middle of the field. You know, he's running basically the post. He's running the wheel, Right? Safety's all the way pushed over here, okay? So pretty good chance you're going to have it pre-snap, okay? This is a TE stunt, right? Not a great job by LSU. He's going to take the tackle out. He's going to loop underneath and be right in Jaden's face, okay? This is a conversion and an explosive play because of this guy. Guy in his face, understanding the coverage, playing in rhythm, Let's it go early. Three and a hitch, right? When you see him take three and a hitch and let it rip, he's very accurate. Throws it over the, the hook player and, you know, let the receivers do the rest. Watch this from the back end. The old goal post is in our way a little bit, but still, watch <laughs> this. I mean, that Crushed. hurts. <laughs> that doesn't feel great, but... You want to you want to see a guy throwing to a spot, throwing on time, throwing in rhythm, like it doesn't get any better than that. That's an elite elite play, over the top of the hook player, trusting his receiver is going to be in that window, knowing that you know this safety 
over here is not going to get involved. Right? This is the area that we want to attack. The safety is over here. Boom. Not necessarily the DOD, but maybe one of the best plays of the day when I watch this tape against Ole Miss because that shows me a lot about him being able to stand in the pocket, him knowing the concept, playing yep. on time, and you get a clean release by a defensive end on a TE stunt in your face and you still convert for 30 yards. Like That's a big-time play. Okay, let's talk about sacks taken because every single week when you watch NFL games, if you take a sack on a drive, it plummets your chances of that drive ending in a score. Uh, let's end with two of these. Um, and Colt, if you can draw it out, see what the play was supposed to be and actually what happened and what his process was in taking the sack in the end, uh, that would be fantastic for the viewers. All right, here we go. Third and nine. Here's the situation, right? Third and nine. They're holding a two point lead on the minus 26. Okay. You know, in your head, you got to be processing, okay, third and nine, we're holding a two-point lead. A punt is not bad. If we punt the ball here, like, we're still in good shape, okay? They're going to motion back into the backfield out of empty, right? So now we, have, now we have protection. This is a play that's run a lot in the NFL, right? He's running a through route. He's basically your alert versus man coverage, okay? This is not man coverage. He's running a through route to take this safety out. He's technically not in the read, but if you were to play like a version of too deep, he could technically like run over the top of the mic. That would be the alert. Here's the dig. This is what we're trying to hit. Okay. We're trying to go there to there. So the dig is one. The shallow cross is two. Okay. And in the back of your mind, you got to be processing, okay, third and nine, third and nine. Like, no mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. If the dig's there, rip it with confidence right. Right. in rhythm. If he's not there, replace him with the shallow because that means the hook players have dropped out underneath the dig. Okay, as we get this snap, three and a hitch, like, I don't love the dig, right? Everybody's out of there. What I do love is the shallow, okay? You know, right there, just give him a little touch throw right out here. This guy's going to fall off. Probably make the play before the sticks, but, but maybe, not. maybe the receiver maybe the receiver makes a miss and all of a sudden you get a first down. Okay, that's right. that's the read. I think he still has time to do that. I think he still has the time to make that. But when you're an athletic quarterback, like he also has the ability to make plays with his feet. And when we talk about you know what he brings to the table, like there's nobody that brings to the table what he does from an athletic standpoint in this year's draft. But there's things like this in a situation like this that's really just throw the shallow. Like, just let them, let them catch the ball, let them make a play, like, see what happens, right? A sack, not really what you want here. So now it goes from, you know, punting from the 30-yard line to now we're punting from the 20-yard line, and it gives Ole Miss a chance to, to jump right back in this game, which they do. This is an unbelievable game, by the way. If you if yeah. if you're watching this and you haven't <laughs> seen this game, like you know, high scoring, fun, crazy environment, like this is this is college football to a T right here. I love it. Jane Daniels, third and five. We're gonna get a motion by you know potentially one of the best receivers in the draft. Really, really elite. Okay, you're basically running picks right here, inside releasing to get the corner to grab you. Kind of like these two guys are not in the progression. The progression is to get him motion, give him a ball right here, close to the sidelines, maybe on the numbers, and maybe he maybe he gets the first. Okay. He motions over. Here they go. Good pocket. Right. He's just got to rip it. Like right there. Like throw it. I know that this guy's driving. He might even break the play up. It might even be yeah. incomplete. Like he might blow him up. Right. But this is the play. This is the read. This is what the coach called. It's third and five. I like the call. You know, LSU did a nice job with Jaden of moving him off his spot, right? Some some keepers, some play action passes, some roll rights. He had some really nice throws in this game outside of the pocket on designed plays. But in and this right here, almost looks like he's making the throw. 
in this. He may see him flash a little bit. He may see yeah. him driving, but you know, earlier the better, right? A lot of times when you're doing rollouts, you know, if you get past your fifth step, so one, three, five, like the ball's got to come out. Like that's your yeah. internal time clock in your head, right? And I think he could throw it, you know, one, three, one, three, like that ball can come out right now. Okay. He may not get the first, but that's the read. There's nobody, there's nobody else in the play. There's no, nobody else is going to open up. Right. And so he doesn't throw it. He knows it's third and five, you know, good job staying in balance and keeping the clock running. But like, this is so unnecessary. Like when you're talking about protecting a guy like Jaden Daniels, like these are the things that, you know, okay. If you're not going to throw it right, just, go down right there. Just go down. Okay. Let the clock run. Maybe they have to burn a timeout. Maybe not, but you're not taking hits from, you know, one, two, potentially three different guys who just obviously want to take a shot on the quarterback, right? That that's their dream. Don't give them that. Don't give them that opportunity. Throw the ball in rhythm. Right. And like, that's just, that's not what you want to see. Colt, do you think that scouts and coaches are going to see eye to eye with Jane Daniels? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a great question. Like unbelievably talented, right. Yeah. As a passer and as a runner, like an explosive playmaker, uh, freaky athletic. Um, I think there's some things that show up that like could be fixed with good coaching, right. Um, you know, playing a little bit more in rhythm, you know, timing up your drops to, different routes and concepts, right? Quick games, you know, in breakers, three and a, three plant throws to the outside or three and a hitch throws to the middle of the field. Like just, there's some, there's some, some things that like he can improve on and work on, but I, I think that's minor. Um, I also think there's times to like, you know, understand just as I'm playing the game and as I translate to the NFL, right. Not taking as much hits, um, you know, really diving into the concepts and understanding like your backside reads when the front side's covered, little things like that, that, you know, essentially all college quarterbacks have to grow into as they go to the NFL. But from a, from a, you know, breaking down his tape, you know, evaluating him as a prospect, I think that front offices and GMs are going to fall in love with him. I really do because of his ability to just make plays and you look at his stats and all like, he's unbelievable. Right. I think from a coaching perspective, I think there may be some hesitation there, some of, of just saying like, you know, yeah, like I want him to be able to. He's not executing you know, everything to the T, right? To the yeah, right. The like, and, and can I, as a coach, you know, get across to him that like, dude, you're the most talented player on the field. Right. Right. I want you to make plays. I, I want when things break down. I, in fact, I need you. That's why I'm drafting right. you. But, but I also want you I mean, to make my plays. That's right. When I call a good play or when I got guys open, I want you to hit them. That's part of the game. Right. That's part of the, his, his evolution as a player has to get to that point because nobody wants to take away, you know, his natural ability to make plays. It's just when I turn on the street ball or when I just play in rhythm, like there's yeah. gotta be a good balance in that. So I do, I think he's, I think he's really, really good. I think there also is a lot of room for improvement and, you know, what he's done over the last two years in college football is nothing short of just really, really impressive. Love that. Love doing this. Love the idea of, Hey, I want you to make your plays, but I want you to make my plays on top of it. It's going to be a great discussion. There's a real chance it goes quarterback, quarterback, quarterback to open the NFL draft. Um, We already have an entire video, 40 plus minutes of Colt McCoy on Drake May. If you haven't watched that, and then we'll have plenty more this off season, this draft season on the channel and uh, maybe another place in the future. Just hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right, that does it. Go and check out the other videos, other scheme episodes, and we'll be back with another one next week. Talk to you then. (laughs) 